Well, these are the, the ground pegs. Um, there's a self tapping screw here, that's just to mark ground level. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a piece of timber on top of this, and we're going to drive it into the ground until it comes to about here. Now, um, before we do that, we're going to put a line the same distance up on each one of them, and we're going to drive the two corner ones and pull the line, and then drive them all to the same line. The reason for this is because if your ground is going up or down, at least your tunnel will be straight and your 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 hoops won't be dipping or going up too far on the top. They'll all be exactly in the line, even if it's on the slope. So just put them down, line them all in the line, and just mark them. Could be any distance. Let's say six inches is fine here now. I'll just draw the line across. And now we'll just set each one in the corners now. We'll drive them with a, a piece of timber now. The reason on top, the reason the bean is not to deform the top of them because your your hoop has got it pushed down on top of this now. And we've marked out our tunnel. This one is eight meters long or about twenty-seven foot, fifteen and a half foot wide or four point seven meters. Now what we're gonna do um we've dug a trench about three or four inches outside the line of the tunnel. We marked our four corners and we dug a trench outside. Um, and we put the, the soil outside as well because all the soil is going to go back in. Now we're, we're going to drive our corner peg here now. And we're going to drive it till here is at ground level. Well, that's good there now. We'll do the same over here, but uh, the ground over here is sloping slightly, it's actually going this way. So we might leave this one up just an inch or two, inch, two inches up over the ground, just to level out the tunnel. We'll just so, well, because the ground is sloping now, I left him slightly up. It's just common sense really. Now what I've done now, I've set up one in each corner. And I pulled the line from the, the blue mark here, six inches up to the other one. And I put the line outside, here. Not in the middle, outside. You can see that, it's actually here. Same on the other side. So I'm just going to come along here now, I've put the bars where they're to go. This is the point here, it's got to come inside the line. It's got to be driven down till that, that blue mark is level with the line. So here we go. And we'll repeat this we'll repeat this process with all the other ground pigs. Yeah. So you lay your, your hooks on the ground, um, obviously the straighter edge on these tunnels goes goes to the side. So we have hot spot tape on this already because it's from an exhibition tunnel and we're just putting it up for a friend of ours. But you normally put that on later. Um, what you do then is you just go around and just root out each one of the things. Sometimes there's a bit of a ridge on them, you might have to give it a rub to make them go in. But uh, rub out on both ends, so that when you lift it at least you know it should go in easily into the ground pipe. And then what you do is, you put in your, uh, you won't be able to connect them on the air, you must connect them on the ground. So, connect the two of them, and you put them in the right direction, there's no point. When we put this up now, it's going to squeeze, it's going to be very difficult to move them, so you don't want to be moving them too far. So just get them more or less directly coming up in the air like that. And then what we'll have to do is we'll have to lift them, put them into one side, and then force them in and push them into the other side. So we'll do that there now. Okay, maybe if you go on your side, so first. So I'll have to lift it up in the air for this. Bring it down a bit. 
And then when it's in his side, then you must come down here like this. And I have to force it in. And then push it down. Right. And we'll repeat the process for each hoop then. Yes, John. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on a ridge bar across the top. No, as I said earlier, there's um, hot spot tape in this because it was put up previously, but normally it wouldn't be on it. So you just slide them in. Now it's a good idea to root out these bars as well first, just to make sure that the thing fits in. We've already done this now. It should fit in easily. No, if she doesn't fit in, there's two things you can do. One is hold it here and hit it with a piece of timber up there. And the other thing is, is that your your tunnel may not be may not be straight, so you might have to push this way in order to straighten this. So that this bar shoots in. But normally you do one of those things and it'll go in very easily. No. Um, what I've done now is I've uh, brought a level down and marked the centre here between the two hoops, and uh, I've marked the centre of this timber. I put them in the same place. Put them in a straight line this way and I've leveled them. And I've drilled two holes in for two twelve meter, two twelve millimeter diameter holes. And I just drive that with a rebound into each one then. No, it just gives us a good solid base. Then we just um, put our posts, bring them out to the end of the base here. Now you see, I put a bit of plastic under the base, protected as well. Any moisture? And level. You need to put at the same angle now as well. Cut him now and then we'll put him on with Galvan and we'll repeat the same process for all the doctors. So once again check she's level. So tapper is a fitting on this but normally they go on to the end of any drill. Start them off nice and slow, it needs a bit of pressure on it. Usually it goes through very easily. Um, Keep all the self tappers that you use on the inside so there's no rough edges and always wear glasses because they're very dangerous. Right Tommy, let's go. Now at the end the hoop this hoop needs to be level. So when you're putting on your um your brace bars, make sure that he is well, that's perfect now we'll tighten that. So um I've marked up one point eight four from the base. Our door is one point eight so I'm alone forty mil uh, 25 mil underneath and 15 mil above, just as a gap. We don't want our door to be too flush, too tight. Very important is to drive another screw from the top here and here because otherwise the most will twist as you're doing it. And then when we've done it with this set, we've got another set of Now before you do anything you put a, a batten on on the outside of the frame like this. We're gonna use this the plastic is gonna come in around here and in here. I'm gonna trap it with another timber in a minute to see it. Put a bit of hotspot tape just there to, to protect it. Put the hotspot tape anywhere where you think the, the plastic will touch the steel. Um, some places where it could cut there, like there, um, here, um, here again. Um, over each bar, um, 
at the gable ends and the, and the, the bars at the end as well here. The other thing then to cover is, is these um, these um, prop bars. They need to go from here, which is kind of the shoulder of the tunnel, down to within six inches or less. Really just keep them as low as you can. Um, there's a picture of these with the instructions and there's a self tapering screw goes into each of these. Keep them in the middle and the inside. There's a nut in the board as well. Keep them on the inside as well so they don't damage the plastic as you're pulling it. Just take one look over the whole thing, make sure there's no plastic is not going to get stuck or anything. So what we've done is we put our plastic down, we put it down on, on um, if the grass is there that's fine. Um, or let's put it on the carpet or tarpaul and anything just to protect it. I tried the rope on it then. We're going to pull it over the top here now. Uh, one man is going to push it up here and I'm going to feed it up. If it gets stuck anywhere along the way, I'm just going to give it a push up with a small piece of timber just, and just wedge it along. Um, I'll have a step ladder at the ready just in case we need it. And uh, after that then what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it down both sides. So it's actually folded in such a way that she's ready to fall open. Fantastic. And my mate there is pulling, but more or less he's only pulling after I pulled it. Like, He's not the one that she's pulling the plastic. I'm, I'm releasing it. He's taking up the slack. know that you don't grip the plastic you can hold it there but don't pull it anywhere where you can show marks. That's the very last one. There, very outside. We're gonna pull both both ways now at the same time. Now when it gets to the top up at the, the, the over the door up there it'll all get caught in a bunch. And when it gets caught in a bunch we'll have to step up in the ladder and just release it, otherwise you'll get all crinkle marks in this. It's very important just to stop there, not to pull and get a load of crinkles. going to make it easier to stretch. If you stretch it when it's, when it's cold, it'll contract in the warm weather and it'll go loose and start to flap. 